Hi, this is Pete Raposa. I'm the mill supervisor here at the Newport Restoration Foundation. I've been with the organization now going on 30 years. Uh, when I first started, I was the, uh, one of the field carpenters and for 20 years, and then I transitioned over to the, to the mill. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the uh, work on sashes that we're doing for the Sammy Whitehorn Museum. And when I first started, um, the senior guys always told me that there was uh, there were three original windows to the museum and it was the round one that you see on the bench here and two arch windows so I'm working on those three windows now and I kind of question that that uh, that legend that was passed down to me so and I'll explain exactly what's going on but first we'll, we'll talk about the round window here and you can see here how it was made, right? So you have your centerpiece here. And what's interesting about this is these tenons are of the muttons. So these are the muttons. Um, you can see here. And the, the glass would fit and live inside of this piece here, right? And then it would be glazed. And what's interesting about this is that these tenons run all the way through. And then they added these little quarter round pieces. So that's interesting, but to say that this window is original, I don't think it is. And the reason for that is because the muntins here are actually one solid piece. And the other tall arch window was made in three sections. So that's a clue right there. So what they did is that, um, three pieces, so you have this, this, this piece here, the middle piece, and the bead. And what they did in order to bend this mutton is they made relief cuts all in this piece about a half inch apart from one another. And that allows this piece to be flexible, right? And then for the shoulder part here where the glass and the glazing would be, they just had a narrow piece and then they nailed it and they bent it along the way and they would do the same thing when they applied this piece they would center it and then just nail it in there so that's how they did it so and this piece doesn't have that so that questions me well questions the the part that this is original and i don't think it is i think this was done when the uh, restoration of that house was done probably in, like in 1970. So one thing about this uh, arch window, this is on the back side of the house, the east side, above the back door. And this was the very first window that I did. And it was in very good shape. And I didn't have to strip the paint down uh, to the bare wood at all. So it was kind of an easy fix. But then the second window, that I did was in really rough shape. And that's when I discovered the, how it was made. The muttons had relief cuts uh, in them. And I wanted to check to see if the first one I did had these relief cuts, because that's an important step. Even though it was completely done and installed, I needed to go back there just for the history and getting the proper uh, documents recorded for this house. So I went there today, pulled out the window, and I actually uh, scraped down to the bare wood on the bead side here, on the interior side. And you can see that there are no relief cuts like the one uh, on the opposite side of the building. So what that tells me is this window, this sash, is not original. Uh, it was probably done perhaps uh, when the NRF purchased uh, the building, acquired the building, I believe in 1970. Um, or it could have been a little bit older than that, uh, but it was certainly not original, as well as the round one. So the only one that I believe is original at this point is the, the six foot arch window facing Thames Street above the formal front entrance. Um, and Another interesting fact that I, for believing that's original, is if you take a look at the interior trim of that house where these windows uh, live, 
So it follows the same arch on the interior side. And we know with certainty that that interior arch is original. And guess how they made that arch? They made relief cuts just like the ones in the muttons to form that arch. So that's another telltale sign that this was definitely of the same time period and very well could have been done at the same time. So thank you for joining us with this video. It's been a real privilege to work on these sashes and it, it keeps me coming back here every single day. And also a unique fact here is that these two sashes from the Samuel Whitehorn Museum haven't been on the same bench or in this mill since it was restored 50 years ago. So that's pretty unique in and of itself. And in the preservation world, what's better than discovering something old 